what do you hope Biden says and what do you think he'll say? I hope that Biden doesn't like stroke out while giving the speech. For me, my, my bar for success right now is not very high. Good evening. The presidency is the most powerful office in the world. It's an uh, office that not only tests your judgment, perhaps even more importantly, it's an office that can test your character. Because you not only face moments where you need the courage to exercise the full power of the presidency, you also face moments where you need the wisdom to respect the limits of the power of the office of the presidency. This nation was founded on the principle that there are no kings in America. Each, each of us is equal before the law. No one, no one is above the law, not even the President of the United States. With today's Supreme Court decision on presidential immunity, that fundamentally changed. For all, for all practical purposes, today's decision almost certainly means that there are virtually no limits on what a president can do. This is a fundamentally new principle, and it's a dangerous precedent because the power of the office will no longer be constrained by the law, even including the Supreme Court of the United States. The only limits will be self-imposed by the president alone. This decision today has continued the court's attack in recent years on a wide range of long-established legal principles in our nation, from gutting voting rights and civil rights to taking away a woman's right to choose to today's decision that undermines the rule of law of this nation. Nearly four years ago, my predecessor sent a violent mob to the U.S. Capitol to stop the peaceful transfer of power. We all saw it with our own eyes. We sat there and watched it happen that day. Attack on the police, the ransacking at the Capitol, a mob literally hunting down the House Speaker, Nancy Pelosi. Gallows erected to hang the Vice President, Mike Pence. I think it's fair to say it's one of the darkest days in the history of America. Now the man who sent that mob to the U.S. Capitol is facing potential criminal conviction for what happened that day. And the American people deserve to have an answer in the courts before the upcoming election. The public has a right to know the answer about what happened on January 6th before they asked to vote again this year. Now, because of today's decision, that is highly, highly unlikely. It's a terrible disservice to the people of this nation. So now, now the American people will have to do what the courts should have been willing to do, but will not. The American people have to render a judgment about Donald Trump's behavior. The American people must decide whether Donald Trump's assault on our democracy on January 6 makes him unfit for public office in the highest office in the land. The American people must decide if Trump's embrace of violence to preserve his power is acceptable. Perhaps most importantly, the American people must decide if they want to entrust the president once again, the presidency, to Donald Trump, now knowing he'll be more emboldened to do whatever he pleases whenever he wants to do it. This is so cool, man. You know, at the outset of our nation, it was the character of George Washington, our first president, to find the presidency. He believed power was limited, not absolute. And that power always resides with the people, always. Now, over 200 years later, with today's Supreme Court decision. It's like a dem fundraising once email. Once again, it will depend on the character of the men and Republicans women. Republicans made who hold murder illegal. Please get out there and vote. Donate five dollars to Nancy Pelosi's re-election fund because the law will no longer do it. I know I will respect the limits of the presidential powers I have for three and a half years, but any president, including Donald Trump, will now be free to ignore the law. I concur with Justice Sotomayor's dissent today. She, here's what she said. She said, in every use of official power, the president is now a king above the law. With fear for our democracy, I dissent, end of quote. So should the American people dissent. I dissent. May God bless you all, and may God help that's us That's it? Our oh, democracy. that's great, man. Thank, thank, you. You. Thank, you. thank 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 you very much.
That's fantastic. Oh, All right, everyone, from our from our resounding kid here. Hey, where's the Act Blue QR code in the bottom left corner so that we can scan it with our phones and donate to the DNC? Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, okay, thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, yep, there we go. This is why I wasn't answering people in chat who were like, hey, what do you expect them to say? Because I, because like, because I've been here before. Oh my god. That's great. I'm glad the literal, like, king above the law, uh, you know, presidential immunity for insurrectionary attempt decision from the, like, criminally corrupt Supreme Court warrants an entire two minutes. He came down from Camp David early for that? Mother should have sent a text, could have tweeted his response. You came down to Camp David, from, from Camp David for that? Jesus Christ. It was all about Trump. Because again, the, the liberal obsession with civility politics and institutional trust prevents him from saying what is true, that the Supreme Court is a partisan and corrupt institution that has torn away at the fundamental presumption that everyone is beneath the law. Uh, it, 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 but he can't mention that because like, oh, that's, that's scary. That would throw into doubt like the, the, the validity of the institution, you know? The American people must choose like no actual, no actual like statement of meaning or purpose, no actual like, yeah, this is wrong and we will stop it. No, of course not. That'd be. He did the who is this president? I'd like a word with him meme. Yeah, honestly, that's like every everything, you know, surprised he didn't break into a Hamilton. So yeah, no, except in Hamilton, the main characters it did, like did things is the, is the thing. What is he then? Burr, you know, insane, genuinely. I was happier minutes ago. It's nice to have them go out there and remind us, like, you know, why should we care if he does? That's great. I love that. Why did I plan a second stream for this? Why am I here? Hello? Why are any of us here? Why should any of us vote, man? Like, okay, if they give this few shits, like, we're voting what? Out of, like, due diligence? The goodness of our heart? Genuinely, every vote that we cast in favor of Joe Biden in November is like a gift. It's like a generous, undeserved gift. It's like a blessing, you know? We're like doting parents who are not giving up on our kids. Our, like, jo Joe Biden is to Hunter Biden what we are to Joe Biden. Way to earn that vote, Biden. Yeah, I didn't even have the goddamn QR code. I, I, like, I, I don't even know what to say. It's like, like the, fundamentally, the Democrats have completely forgotten how to use power. This is why it feels like Trump gets to do whatever he wants and Joe Biden can't do anything. Because a lot of the power that Donald Trump wielded as a president and continues to wield as a private citizen and former president is the bully pulpit. The ability for him to get on top of a soapbox and scream about what he wants. I tweeted this, but I, I think it's meaningful. Why do you think every Republican can name Donald Trump's major accomplishments, highlights, and, and, and like desired projects, right? Uh, alleged or otherwise. MAGA, border, inflation, China, like, like that. You go up to any Republican voter, they've got the blueprint. They've got the basic, they've got the, the basic understanding of what Trump represents. Are they wrong? Yes. Is Trump bad? Yes. But he has effectively communicated the message. Now, I ask you, if you went up to your average Democrat, do you think they would be able to explain Trump's, sorry, Biden's major successes and his policy goals that aren't just he'll stop the Republicans from doing what they want to do? So you can't mention abortion because Joe Biden didn't do anything with abortion. The conservatives did. Hard to mention the border, considering that Biden's losing on that front. What, jobs? Just some vague, like, uh, you could talk about infrastructure, sure. But the bill passed. What's next? Any Trump voter can tell you what's next for Trump. It's easy for them. They just scream, MAGA, border, China, inflation, right? What about Biden? For the most part, when people on the left, I mean left of center, talk about what Biden is going to do, what he has done, they talk about stopping what the Republicans have done. Even Biden talks that way. Biden and the Democrats constantly frame their candidacy as a force to prevent the Republicans from doing the bad things they want to do, but not as an active agent attempting to put forward their own series of changes. And that's, of course, because the, the liberals are institutionalists. They don't like populism. They don't like rocking the boat. They like uh, staying the course. 
and we see it now like the the consequences of this inaction born about in 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 polling and in policy some people remember his workers right stuff i still think it's interesting that even in my community where you guys are probably more politically educated than the media in america and i fucking hope so at least people say stuff like the infrastructure bill he did good stuff for unions these aren't policy positions these are uh, footnotes, tidbits. These are examples of things that happened. Where are we headed, Biden? What is the direction? What is this all for? I think for a lot of people, it's just staying the course to the grave. Oh, yeah, certainly. Doesn't help that he didn't keep hardly any of his campaign promises like the public option, decriminalizing marijuana fully, student loan business. Though he, in fairness, people misrepresent, he did try with the student loan business. People often give him shit for that. He actually did, like, he was stopped multiple times in different ways on that one. So that's, that, you know, not hard enough. It, he, he, it wasn't just one and done. I mean, he tried two, three different methods. And yeah, no, I'll, I'm not going to give him too much crap for that one. Uh, in a bunch of other ways, though, yeah, he's uh, let people down. I don't like how he says he's going to protect abortion rights when he gets elected again, if he gets elected again, because how is he going to do that exactly? He doesn't have... Congress? How is he going to put forward federal protection for abortion rights? That's another thing Biden and the Democrats don't do. They never give you Hail Marys. Donald Trump was constantly doing shit of questionable legality to try to get his agenda done. The, the Democrats won't lift a finger unless they have a completely clear pathway ahead of them. They never force the issue. In an environment where there's so much partisanship and institutional corruption and like do-nothing attitudes, the idea that you would only make a move when the path is clear is insane. Like, you're just giving up on power then. I really want a dark branded to reemerge today. It's not happening, dude. It's not happening. The purpose of a system is what it does. I know that! I'm telling you all that, yeah? It's accusatorially. Because that, that phrase, the purpose of a system is what it does, has always been really smarmy, right? Like, even if it's true, it's really smarmy, like, uh, yeah, of course, because the purpose of a system is what it does. And like I say, I know, you're not wrong. It's just, with the overturning of Chevron plus this immunity BS, do you think they're already implementing Project 2025? No. Project 2025 is a Heritage Foundation roadmap intended for the transition to the Trump administration from Biden's where um, they are trying to sort of gut the administrative state. The vast majority of the sauce behind the administrative state is, uh, or sorry, but behind Project 2025 involves uh, using the power of the presidency, which of course Donald Trump does not have at the moment. Yeah, this is a good runway for Project 2025. It's a setup for Project 2025. Do you think Trump will refuse to hold an election in 28? Who the f knows what's going to happen in 28, dude? Come on. Trump is trying to overturn the Manhattan conviction, citing immunity decision? Yep. Just hours after the U.S. Supreme Court ruling granted him immunity for official acts committed in office, he moves to overturn the Manhattan conviction, which describes, uh, I mean, who the f knows if it's an official act? To, to to misappropriate funds, to redirect them from campaign funds, to pay off somebody, to pay off a prostitute for hush money. Like, who knows if that's, if that's an official act? I don't know. You don't know. Who knows? That's pre-president? Uh, no, it was president. Didn't that happen in 20... Wait, did I... Is my memory blank this out? Didn't all of he... Didn't he do that when he was running for 2020, not for 2016? It was for 2016? Oh, okay, my, I've just, yeah. He wasn't even president at the time? Okay. I'm sure they'll decide it's an official act anyway, whatever. Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, the Supreme Court ruling was definitely written in such a way to specifically work in Project 2025. SCOTUS affirmatively greenlights a number of very scary points in which it holds POTUS immune, like firing any federal executive branch employee at will very specific thing that just happens to be the linchpin of project 2025 they don't broadly define what an official act is but they specifically name that one i wonder why maybe so that when he does that there's not even a chance to contest it to determine whether or not a lower court would argue that it's not an official act of the presidency congress cannot act on and courts cannot examine the president's actions on subjects within his conclusive and preclusive constitutional authority i love my checks and balances courts can't examine Jesus. If overturning Roe v. Wade stirred up the nation enough to vote for Biden, do you think these two rulings could do the same? Not necessarily, no. 
Roe v. Wade was like maybe the most well-known Supreme Court case in American history, at least contemporarily today and the way people talk about it. Roe v. Wade has been like a broadly discussed subject a lot of people are familiar with. Nobody outside of policy wonks knows what Chevron is or does. And in terms of the current presidential immunity case, it's really up to whether or not Democrats sound the alarm as, as hard as they possibly could, which they're not going to. The rulings are too abstract to mobilize people. Yeah. The rural voter voting magmas... Uh, <laughs> magma maga is going to be super happy when their life gets shittier and shittier i i don't want to do the like radical anti-dnc thing but please do remember that literally everything always is the democrats fault like part of the reason why russia invaded ukraine back in 2022 part of the reason why they annexed crimea back in 2014 is because the West was incredibly chauvinistic and arrogant in how we dealt with Russia after the end of the Cold War. We facilitated and presided over an economic shift that you said Democrats. I know we presided over an economic shift that basically like the former Soviet countries, uh, and a lot of them have basically not recovered to this day. We did this because we wanted to exploit them. We wanted to run circles around them after we won. It was our victory lap. We we knew the da in, in many cases, we knew the damage would cause. We did it anyway. And likewise, the arrogance of the Clintonite neoliberal wing of the Democratic Party uh, has led in large part to the deprivation of the rural communities that today vote like 99% Republican. It's largely an urban-rural divide. And I feel no sympathy for the like stiff white collared white boy living in suburbia who's scared of black people he's never met. I do feel some sympathy for the rural voter who has lived in like knowing that those in power feel contempt towards him for basically their entire lives. And the Democrats have never meaningfully addressed this. Uh, as long as the Democrats are run by the New York Dems, as long as the Democrats effectively are like a New York run, you know, you say, oh, liberal coastal elites, both parties are run by coastal elites, you know, but I think the contemptuousness towards the poor, uh, not saying that Republicans don't have it, they definitely do. I just think that the liberals, frankly, uh, never really got their shit together on this issue. I think that they like flubbed it constantly over and over, and they have provided a path for the right wing to build a rural base of support almost entirely off of empty virtue signaling and reactionary politics. We don't really have like blue dog Democrats anymore, you know? The Rust Belt got hollowed out. We barely hold uh, a majority in like the Michigan legislature. The, the Democrat, like, the, at every stage, the Democrats have fulfilled their goal of being the, like, bedrock upon which fascist uh, the, agitation is built. Yeah, they made this bed. Is there any, like, hope of things not going to shit? Well, if you want a non-sarcastic answer, it's worth noting that the Republicans have basically no front man except for Donald Trump. If Donald Trump ever becomes enfeeble or dies or has a heart attack, whatever... Uh, it would be basically impossible for them to continue this public campaign up until a point. If Donald Trump completely guts our democracy and administrative state, uh, it might be too late at that point, you know? Do you think the failure of the DNC to uphold democracy will lead more people to progressivism? Sure, but that doesn't necessarily translate to political power. I saw John Paul. Could we go back to loop wheel shirts? Funny you mentioned that. I was just thinking about those. I should get some. 